So there was something brought up to me on my Discord server recently, and it's the fact that you don't have to use wait for child that often. For example, if I wanted to get the part, I would add a script in server script service, and do local part would be equal to workspace and wait for child part, and if I printed out the part and run the game, it would print out right here in the console, but you don't really need to do it for pre-existing objects that are already in the workspace. It also works if I do workspace that part and then run the script. It didn't wait for the child and it printed out the part. And same if I do like a folder, folder, folder and then the part, like this, it's still going to print out the part right here. And for a bigger benchmark that I've made, I have 22 plant models which are nested inside of each other like this. And I also have this recursive function where this script is also going to run at the start of the game, where you're just going to look through the plants and then print out how many children each of the plants have. And there are more plants, but they are just like, well, in one spot right there. So if I move this spot out, then these leaves out. It's just a bunch of plants basically just stacked on top of each other. But I can run the script without any problem, just to show you that it gets everything properly without any single wait for child method. You have the get children and then file in shadow of class. And I'm gonna run it without the script right here so it doesn't error anything. It printed out that this plant has five children for each of the plants in the group right here and the function happened 22 times from this recursive number. So all of this model basically got loaded on the server. And I use the mesh parts because they usually take longer to load than normal parts. So for a quick conclusion, you don't have to use wait for child for pre-existing parts that aren't made in the runtime. But that was just the server script. And just to show the primary usage of wait for child, it's mostly used in local scripts that are run by the client, since the engine doesn't guarantee the time or order in which the objects are replicated from the server to the client. And there is also this note about streaming enabled, and it even tells you that the find fish child method is a more efficient alternative for objects that are assumed to exist. Which these plants are that object, since everything in the workspace that is pre-existed is assumed to exist by default. Now if I added another script and named this one make part, and another one named get part, if I do task wait one second and then it's going to create a part in the workspace and then this get part script is going to wait for that part. I'm also going to name the part differently. I will name this one my part and just do some prints and then disable the get plants and I'm going to run these two scripts. Oh, this one was supposed to be named. So here at 17.05.54 it was waiting for the part. Then at 55 seconds it basically got the part. And this is from waiting the one second right here, but if I let's say remove the task wait, so it's going to create the part instantly, this other script also got the part pretty much instantly, since there is no time difference. But if I do workspace dot my part, and then just uncomment the task wait right here, and now run it, it's going to say that my part is not a valid member of workspace, since both of these scripts basically run at the same time, where this one created the part after one second. So this line of code right here couldn't fetch it. So for something like this, you want to use wait for child for objects that are created created at runtime. And the documentation also mentioned something about replication. And I really quickly wanted to touch on a dev forum post that I found from 2018. So take it with a grain of salt because some of the information might be outdated. But I really quickly wanted to just show this order of operation for loading the local scripts from different containers. So it starts off with replicated first, then you have the game is loaded, then the starter player scripts, and also the player's backpack. And another post which says about changes to non-replicated first loading order, which mostly just touches on the topic of scripts in the replicated first container. I will be leaving links to both of these in the description if you want to read them yourself. But from this one, I mostly wanted to just show these two points right here, which is to use for wait for child for every object you interact with before the game loaded event fires. And you can also wait for the game loaded event to fire from local scripts too. But going back to the first the forum post, there is this clarification right here that is basically what I talked about in the video already, that any instances which are published in studio or with the place in studio will be readily accessible, which means if you already made them instead of making them at runtime, like this set of plans right here. But if the instance is dynamically created during gameplay, which means at runtime, you must use wait for child. And this situation is applicable for any instances parented within any service which are replicated from server to client, so like workspace or replicated storage. So touching about the replication thing, if I 
if I just added the script bug which is supposed to make the part after one second and added a starter player script which has to be a local script if I do part workspace that part and then print it out and then do a playtest you can see that part is not a valid member of workspace and this error happens even if I remove the task weight from right here and if there is an already existing my part with the script disabled, if I do a playtest right now, there is still going to be an error showing that it doesn't exist. And I could even use a different method like pinefish child, my part instead, and it's still not going to work. And although this script ran after the game loaded event, the game loaded event doesn't ensure that every descendant of the workspace is loaded before the script runs. This game loaded event returns after the client completely receives the snapshot. And this snapshot is loading all the services. I believe the camera and the terrain instances are something that has to load also, but not any descendants of these instances. So in this case, you just have to use wait for child my part instead. So now the client waited for the part to exist. And now let's talk about the neat thing with the player GUI or the starter GUI container. If you have a menu, which is a screen GUI, which has a frame, which has a image and whatever, and we add a local script, Normally in this scenario, you need to use screen GUI and then the wait for child method frame. But the neat thing with this is that you don't have to do it. You can just do frame and just follow everything with the dot notation. And that's because the scripts in the starter GUI, if a script is within a UI object that's supposed to be replicated to the client, the engine waits for this object to be fully replicated with all of its descendants, after which the local scripts run. So if I do a print image and then do a playtest, you can see that the image label is right here. So firstly, the screen GUI loaded, then it saw that it had a local script and then some other descendants like the frame and the image label and then after it loaded everything the script ran and that's the thing about the starter GUI container it runs the script after the whole GUI object is replicated so you don't need to use wait for child inside of here but if you add the screen GUI in replicated first or replicated storage that would be a whole nother story and now let's also take a look at the replicated first with the is loaded event so you can print out the game is loaded if I try to play you can see that it's going to print out false right here in the console since I can I mentioned previously this is the container that runs before the game is loaded event so the thing that we can do with these scripts is wait for the loaded event so what we can do is game that loaded and you can see that it's an event because of the icon followed by the wait method and now if I print out game is loaded, it's going to print out true. So usually the replicated first would have a logic which doesn't need for the game to be fully loaded. Like let's say making a menu GUI, a loading screen or really sending some joint data to the server. So you don't really need to use wait for child in server script for already existing instances. You mostly do it if the instance is created at runtime. And for local scripts, you don't need to use wait for child in GUI objects in the starter GUI. And with the starter player scripts, since the game is loaded even doesn't ensure for the descendants or already pre-existing instances to be fully replicated to the client so you'd also need to use wait for child in there but that about should cover it so yeah if you like the video then please leave a like and if you want to support me you can become a channel member and also if you have any other topics that i should overview then you can comment them down below but that's going to be everything for today so thank you guys for watching and see ya